in today's video we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern and we made a video just yesterday and today we're looking at an entirely different story when it comes to severe weather we have three extended day outlooks we have three in range day outlook so today tomorrow and the next day that also look quite bad so we are looking at six seven eight days in a row here of very bad severe weather potentially coming up so we're going to be diving into that there is other storms happening around the nation uh snowfall out west still happening in the mountainous areas and some model guidance suggesting the mountains of the northeast could get a little bit more before the snow season is entirely said and done uh, big rainfall events in other areas, so it's just going to be action-packed all around. Still very high humidity, temperatures lowering a little bit uh, here in the extent, or really in the upcoming pattern as a whole, but as we're reaching towards late May into early June, it's not really going to be cold. Uh, it's just going to be like upper 70s, lower 80s as opposed to upper 80s, so still warm to even hot, but not quite as hot as it typically would be. So let's dive into things. The first thing we're taking a look at here is what we call the CAPE. That stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. And this is just going to give you a rough idea of the amount of thunderstorm fuel that is available out there in different areas. And it is like a consumable fuel. So the thunderstorms use this. They develop and they actually eat it up and it lowers. Um, but when we get really, really high amounts of it, there's plenty for multiple thunderstorms in a row to use up. So we are seeing some of that high high cape even right now as we're taking a look at it anywhere in the greens and yellows is already uh really really high um but the the reds the purples the whites that's where we're looking at very high amounts even the black uh we're seeing very very high amounts there you know we need about a thousand you know 500 to a thousand for thunderstorm development in the whites and blacks we're talking about four or five six thousand uh here in cape which is basically the highest end you can imagine uh and now as we move towards this afternoon you can see that as we reach towards uh the daytime temperatures that does lower a little bit typically it's obviously a lot more humid at night so sometimes we see those higher values during the middle of the night we still have very, very elevated, I don't know why this is blue, I'm going to switch that, but we see very high elevated uh, amounts of CAPE in this area, still excessive amounts. And there is plenty, uh, you know, in the eastern states here to the north of there, but this is just where that excessive amounts of CAPE is lying for later today. As we reach towards tomorrow on Friday, the 16th, we see that these excessive amounts do stretch into the southeast. So thunderstorms are abundant throughout a lot of areas here. Um, especially the Carolinas and Virginia here, we're looking at, again, those values that are, you know, very, very sufficient for multiple rounds of thunderstorms. And then Saturday, we see a cold front developing. So we could tell that behind that cold front, there is almost little to no cape at all. Uh, it's mostly underneath and to the east of it where we're still seeing some cape here. Saturday's interesting because it's as we're transitioning from like our first round of severe weather into the second one the second one is where we have those extended day outlooks those are for sunday monday and tuesday so let's take a look at it i even think the severe weather could persist into wednesday maybe even thursday of next week um so that's why we were talking about you know even six seven eight days of potential upcoming severe weather here uh, as we take a look at sunday that's when things start to build back up out west again that cold front has pushed through for these areas so we see much drier cooler conditions that's why there's little to no cape but we see it rebuilding for the southern and central plains here these areas dealing with those high cape amounts and this is day one of that upcoming severe weather event uh, as we reach towards monday the 19th we see it doesn't move very much it's similar areas it's just expanded northward and a little bit eastward uh, but similar areas, it's not moving significantly day after day. So we could see some areas see multiple days of severe weather for a given location, which is pretty crazy. Even by Tuesday, which again is that third and final extended day outlook that we have, uh, it does move a little bit eastward with these high values of Cape in the Southern Plains. What I call the lower Midwest and deep South there as well, seeing a lot of this and the Southeast seeing some as well. Again, Tuesday, the 20th. By the time we're looking at Wednesday on the 21st, we still do have areas dealing with higher capes. So I think we could be dealing with some deep south, you know, lower Ohio Valley and even southeast severe weather by the time we're reaching Wednesday the 21st. 
And then as we reach Thursday the 22nd, we get another situation where there's clearly a cold front pushing a lot of this out to the east and south, depending on where you're at. There is still by Thursday the 22nd afternoon, some available for the southeast, also some for south Texas. But that is even going to come to an end here by Friday the 23rd, when we basically see all of it come to an end. And that's, again, eight days from now. Friday the 23rd, and after this point, we don't see quite as much. There is little glimmers, but really we don't see anything significant from that, um, let's see, Friday the 23rd to Friday the 30th. So a full week with a lot less activity potentially, but all of that is happening during the 10 to 15 day range. So obviously this could look different as that is, it's again, very far out, but uh, that would be good news to see that slowing down at least after we get this cluster of multiple days, like a week plus of severe weather happening. And we've already seen a couple days in a row. So when we look at it as a whole, it's going to be like a two week period of significant severe weather happening every single day. Very active. You know, we obviously expect this in May a lot of times. Let's take a look at the precipitation, though. Uh, we do see a low here. That is going to be nearby where we expect a lot of this to happen on uh, Sunday, but that is a different low. Some thunderstorms around here for these areas. I'll, I'll, I'll advance us towards the high temperatures so we can get a little bit of a better idea. But we do see some thunderstorms in here where there is a slight risk, I think, for Virginia and North Carolina at least, mostly the central regions of those states. We do have a little bit of activity happening back out west here where there is, again, higher risks, especially overnight tonight, Thursday to Friday. We have an enhanced risk in these areas for a lot of the Midwest and Great Lakes. Very strong low, 980 near the Dakotas. So that's really fueling everything here. By the time we look at tomorrow afternoon, we see a lot of our thunderstorm activity is laid out a little flatter for parts of the lower Midwest, Appalachian Mountain Range, up into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. As we take a look at Saturday, uh, we see that areas in the east uh, are, are dealing with a lot of thunderstorm activity for the deep south, mid-Atlantic, northeast here, potentially even severe weather again Saturday on the 17th. I think we have Friday or Saturday. I think it's one of these two days. We'll see it on the Storm Prediction Center outlook, but there is a slight risk already set up for a lot of areas in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. We'll see that later on, like I mentioned. Uh, Saturday afternoon here, it looks like the Northeast is dealing with quite a lot of this. And then as we're transitioning from Saturday to Sunday, we see a lot of storminess out West and a low set up right there over the four corner states. That is going to be the system that brings the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, severe weather. I know it's getting confusing because there's so much severe weather going around just every single day. I'm trying to break it up into kind of segments. We obviously get the next few days of severe weather between Saturday and Sunday we transition back to a low out west, and that's the next round that is going to cross the nation here. So let's take a look at it. Sunday afternoon and evening, really. Uh, this is going to be 8 p.m. on Sunday Eastern time, so obviously a little earlier out west and for the central states. But we do get this first area of thunderstorm and severe weather activity flaring up for states like Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas. That's the main area we're watching. Snowfall for the Rockies, as I mentioned earlier, and lots of rainfall around for the lower elevations out there. And a strong low over eastern Colorado, 989. The classic location for these lows to be starting out. As we keep going towards Monday afternoon here on the 19th, we see that uh, we have a weaker low here over Missouri, a stronger low now over New Mexico, and we have still a similar area where we're watching for severe weather. It's just expanded northward. So Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas probably going to be in that threat. Missouri, Arkansas, Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, southern Minnesota, maybe even extending into a bit of Illinois there as the primary area, although I'm sure these are thunderstorms and will carry somewhat of a threat still. The Rockies still seeing a lot of snowfall also by Monday the 19th. Here is Tuesday on the 20, uh, 20th. Again, this low gets a little bit more organized between Kansas and Oklahoma. Clearly a severe weather sector, and here we're going to have to be watching for, again, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, and Illinois. So again, it's not moving very much. It's just kind of like wobbling around the same area from day to day. Uh, it is going to start moving, though. This is the nighttime. This looks really bad. Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri especially. That is a not a good look. That looks like severe storms for sure. By the time I reach Wednesday, the 21st, again, there isn't an extended day outlook for this, but I'm assuming that we are going to have somewhat of a threat somewhere in here for Wednesday, the 21st uh, as well. And then even as we reach towards Thursday, 
things get interesting at some point between wednesday and thursday we have a low here and there will be probably a thunderstorm threat for the eastern seaboard but we get this low transferring offshore and it's going to become a lot more like a nor'easter here uh here on thursday so we see that transferring and then look at this by friday morning at 2 a.m this is may 23rd we have a 998 offshore and typically when the low is to the east we're looking at more steady rain and showers as opposed to severe weather and thunderstorms here interestingly enough as we reach towards friday at 8 a.m look at this new york the catskills adirondacks green mountains white mountains all seeing some snowfall there uh, this is far out and that is a little bit unusual so take it with a grain of salt but interesting to see and that continues actually into the afternoon 2 p.m here nor'easter offshore even worsens a little bit by the time we're looking at 8 p.m. on Friday. We see basically a lot of the Berkshires, the Green Mountains, White Mountains, Adirondacks, Catskills, all these mountain ranges seeing some snowfall. And that persists um, through a lot of the day here. That low is a 989, and it's in a perfect location just offshore of Boston and to the south of Maine. Really, really crazy stuff. And then that one moves out. And again, this is the point where we're kind of quieter as far as Cape and severe weather. We mostly see a steady rainfall event here. A low tries to develop, and it wants to take a similar track to that nor'easter as it wants to kind of swing off and become another one. So maybe more rainy towards the end of May, a little less thunderstorm action, if this is correct, which again, it is far out, so hard to say, but that is the look. Looking at the total precipitation here, obviously these areas dealing with thunderstorms and severe weather, it will be a little bit hit or miss because if you miss out on a heavier thunderstorm but the town over gets it that's going to be a huge contrast in the amount of precipitation you saw versus the town next to you so it's a little harder to predict but these areas in general should see a healthy above average amount of precipitation for the most part with these severe weather events and then a lot of this is going to come from a couple thunderstorm events but also one to maybe even two nor'easter type systems which is mostly going to bring a lot of precipitation up there Looking at the anomalies, again, these areas a little hit or miss, but mostly above average. These areas get thunderstorms plus the nor'easters. That's why we're seeing inches above average over the next two weeks for a lot of these mid-Atlantic and northeast areas. What you all have been waiting for, the Storm Prediction Center outlooks. Again, already getting crazy stuff here for today on Thursday the 15th. Large general thunderstorm risk area there in the lighter green. Uh, marginal risk there in the darker green. Dealing with isolated severe weather, that is a large area as well. Two slight risk areas in those yellow regions, and that is where we expect scattered about severe weather. And then later on this evening, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan there, all dealing with an enhanced risk of severe weather in that orange region, and that is where we expect more widespread severe weather to begin uh, again a little bit later this evening and overnight. Day two, which is tomorrow, obviously, Friday the 16th here, we have three general thunderstorm risk areas, one for the Sierra Nevada mountains, which is crazy, some for the northern Rockies, and then one here over the east. We have the large marginal risk area, slight risk area, and another enhanced risk there for a lot of the Midwest and Ohio Valley. Day three, Saturday the 17th, like I said, there's a slight risk here over the mid-Atlantic and northern southeast coast. And then down there for the Southern Plains, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, we also have a slight risk there as well. Large marginal risk and a very large general thunderstorm risk also for Saturday the 17th. Now, extended day, again, we have a lot of these. The yellow, which we're, we're only getting yellows, this is for Sunday the 18th, those all translate to at least a slight risk of severe weather. So that's what you can kind of anticipate, but a lot of times we'll see this and then we'll get an enhanced in there at times, maybe even more. So keep that in mind. Sunday the 18th, slight risk expected there in the central and southern plains. Day five, Monday, again, it doesn't move too much. Monday the 19th here, we see the similar states, just the eastern regions of them the next day on Monday the 19th. Then day six, Tuesday the 20th, moves just slightly eastward into parts of the Midwest and still the Southern Plains. That is all we have for now, but I assume the next day, Wednesday and Thursday, we could see this continuing to move eastward and having somewhat of a, of a threat. So this is going to be a multi, multi-day um, kind of just severe weather period that we're entering into here. Very action-packed, and hopefully we quiet down after this because... This is a whole lot all at once. With all that being said, we upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload. 
so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.